Hello everyone and welcome to the Spokes Podcast. Today we're in Meredith Glazer's cargo bike and uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, a little bit about what we're going to do here at the Urban Cycling Institute. So welcome to the show, Meredith. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is great. This we're... is my first time doing a ride cast. All right. So we'll see how well I can actually concentrate on talking, <laughs> talking to somebody while, while riding. And, uh, and having a guest in my cargo bike. Yeah, this is quite the crazy thing. So we're coming up into one of my favorite intersections uh, because it was part of this Desire Lines analysis. And so back in 2012, I think it was, the city and um, a couple of partners um, analyzed a couple of intersections and they found that Bicyclists were using the intersection in a very interesting way. You know, they weren't using the infrastructure per se. Yeah. And um, so what they did was they took those results, and um, right where that guy is standing behind behind you over there. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So there used to be a protective island right there. Look at the size of that thing. That thing yeah. is probably like seven meters across. It's, it's huge. seven meters across. It's huge. Yeah. Maybe even more than that. I mean, it's a huge area. They took out the the protective island uh, to make a lot of more space for cyclists. Um, and all the engineers were really nervous about doing that because, of course, you know, it's a protective measure and yeah. they want to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, but they took it out and um, and uh, it, was a, it was a success. And so from the technical standpoint, you know, it was... Uh, there were more cyclists could go through the green light and uh, and delay in that way was sort of reduced, I guess. But it also made just so much more space. So in the morning peak, there's just so many cyclists right at that intersection. <laughs> I think something like uh, 2,000 in the, in the morning yeah. peak, you know, it's just... And then throughout the whole day, there's something like 30,000 cyclists crossing that intersection. So it's pretty impressive. So that's a good example of uh, research working with uh, the, the government and consultancies to, yeah. to make these innovative ideas happen. So yeah. what kind of pro partners did you work with? The city of Amsterdam? It was the city of Amsterdam. I think, uh, yeah, another traffic engineering consulting firm. Um, at Copenhagen Eyes was on that yeah. project. And then the University of Amsterdam. All right. Yeah. So that's a big consortium. And, yeah. you know, I, I would like to see more of this happen where, where researchers can really collaborate and bring their expertise uh, to make something happen, and especially in the local neighborhoods. Yeah. Right. And and contribute something back to the community. Yeah. So that's yeah. really cool. Uh, you also worked on a similar type project uh, where they took out all the traffic lights. Yeah. Is that your project? Should we ride over there? Uh, I mean, we could. Do you have time? Yeah, we could. Okay. It's only another five minutes or something. All right. Um, but yeah, that was a really interesting project. That was two years ago at Alexander Plain when um, the bicycle program manager called me up and said, hey, Meredith, we're going to do this pilot uh -huh. uh, over at Alexander Plain. We're going to shut off the lights for two weeks. And they already had hired a, a traffic engineering consultancy firm to, um, to look at baseline and intervention you know, safety and delay and throughput and all the sort of technical yeah. um, uh, facets. And what they wanted from us was to actually talk to bicyclists themselves. So I got a team together of, I think it was seven of us. Um, and we had video recorders. Um, I designed a sort of script and protocol for interviewing cyclists, so intercept interviews, yeah. and we interviewed um, at baseline, so before the pilot, before the, the traffic lights were shut off, we interviewed about 200 cyclists. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. during peak, uh, morning and evening rush, and we asked them a couple questions. We asked them, one, you know, what do you think of this traffic the intersection? Um, we, we also asked them, do you think the lights are necessary? Mm -hmm. um, and then... <laughs> Wave bumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think the lights are necessary? And then um, 
what do you think would happen if the lights were, were shut off? Mm -hmm. So it was an interesting mix of results. About almost 100% of the, the cyclists did not like the intersection. <laughs> <laughs> like with the traffic lights. Yeah, with the lights on. Like uh -huh. people, people really complained a lot. They said, you know, it's too busy, and um, people are are uh, angry with each other, and um, and oh, they said things like, the lights are always green at the same time, which we know that doesn't happen. Yeah. But it just felt like it just felt like that happened. Um, and then. And then they also said the lights are absolutely necessary. So something like 80%, I think, said that, you know, without the traffic lights, there will be chaos, mass chaos. <laughs> and uh, so, so that was a really interesting result. And, and then we went away for um, a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the pilot began. So the lights, they just shut the lights to a, to a yellow blinking. Um, and uh, we let it, we let it settle for a couple days before doing the intervention um, interviews. And this time it was a lot more difficult to actually get the interviews because people were flowing, right? Oh. They were going, so we could easily get people when they were stopped at the red light, right? Um, but during during the experiment, it was uh, it was difficult to get, so we had to run after people. Yeah. <laughs> but we got about 170. <laughs> people of all different ages, you know, it was a very mixed, mixed group. And then we asked them some different questions. Um, we asked them one, have you noticed, did you notice that the lights had turned off? Um, and then we asked them, you know, what, what do you think yeah. of it? And again, we had some really interesting results. For the first question, if they noticed it, actually 10% did not even notice that the lights had changed. The light situation like had changed. Like they didn't notice that there were, the traffic lights were all gone? No, <laughs> they weren't all gone. They were just flashing, okay. right? Okay. So that was really interesting. And it actually correlated really well because the technical uh, results showed that 10% ran the red light. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, so there were people who were there on most days, just perhaps already, doing this negotiating yeah. behavior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we asked them, you know, what do you think of it? Um, and it's not that everybody loved the intersection. It's that people like, people disliked it less. Right? Okay. And our conclusions were, were, we had a couple conclusions. One was, um, that there was a learning curve to this new situation, right? Uh, that people were a bit uncomfortable with with negotiating a light on their own. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't rainbows and unicorns, you know? It wasn't like, oh, let's turn off the traffic lights and everybody's going to have a great time. You know, no, there's actually a lot of cognitive and neurological functions going on in your brain, you know, these processes that are happening in your brain that you, when you negotiate in a situation that's new and that has, that, that is learning, you know, learning takes time. Yeah. Um, the other, the other main conclusion was that social interaction overall increased, right? Mm -hmm. From the before situation. Uh, so people were using verbal gestures, nonverbal gestures uh, at an increased rate. They were also using eye contact uh, at an increased rate. And um, this was also the case between, not only between cyclists and cyclists, but between cyclists and drivers as well. Yeah. Um, and we also noticed that a lot of drivers would give, would give priority using these gestures um, to cyclists, even though they didn't have to. Kind of like what happened to us back there. Yeah, we, we like what happened to us back there, yeah. right? That, so there was, there was this sort of, um, there was just interesting social interaction going on, taking place that, that just didn't take place beforehand. Um, and 
yeah, we're not really sure like why or how this happens, but maybe there are certain spaces that we can play with in our cities that, um, that can allow for this type of social interaction. And again, it doesn't have to be positive, right? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be positive interactions, but interactions can also just be, uh, can be difficult, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, and now we'll write it. Now we'll write it. We'll, we'll go through the intersection and, and uh, we'll, we'll show you how it works. Uh, yeah, so and since, well, actually, it might be interesting to point out that since that, it, two years ago, since that experiment two years ago, um, the city then physically removed the traffic light infrastructure. Oh, it's totally gone now. It's you can't totally even tell gone. it was there yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. And then they, it went through a whole redesign process as well. Oh, so okay. When what they also did was they shifted the priorities. So now, whereas before, um, like I said, car drivers would would sort of give give way yeah. to cyclists. Now they have to. Oh. Yeah, on okay. that same stretch. So um, so maybe now there's even less interaction. Interesting. Because now cyclists have the priority right there. Yeah. And who knows if these interactions are meaningful? You know, there would, we didn't uh, we didn't collect data from. Uh, here we are using it. Uh huh. Whoa, here we are. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is it. This there used to be four traffic lights, one on each corner. Yeah. And now, as you can see, it is all gone. And actually, if you if you look at these tiles closely, you can even see uh, where they filled in the tiles. Yeah. Uh, where the traffic lights used to be. Yeah. So there used to be a huge again protective island right yeah. here on this corner. Oh, look at that. It's gone. Yeah, and this that's gone. And there used to be another protective island on the other corner. We'll go around it again. This is amazing. It's sort of like a look at this. a non roundabout roundabout. Yeah. Because you can wow. just keep going around and around. And almost all of it is uh, you got cyclist tram prioritized. Tracks and, and just lots of stuff going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, he was supposed to yield. Yeah. But didn't. <laughs> I guess. So I guess in practice, things always. Uh, oh, that was fun. Okay. That was fun.